Hi everybody, thanks for tuning back in to a little bit more of Out of the Dust. We pick up at Autumn 1934. Hired work. My father hired on at Wireless Power on Tuesday, excavating for towers. He said, I'm good at digging and everyone who knows about our hole knows he's telling the truth. He might as well earn a couple dollars. It doesn't look good for the winter crop. Earning some cash will make him feel better. I don't think he'll drink it up. He hasn't done that since Ma. It's hard to believe I once brought money in too, even if it was just a dime now and then for playing piano. Now I can't hardly stay in the same room with one, especially Ma's. It's October of 34. This is November of 1934. Almost rain. It almost rained Saturday. The clouds hung low over the farm. The air felt thick. It smelled like rain. In town, the sidewalks got damp. That was all. This one's called Those Hands. This is still November of 1934. The Wildcats started practice this week. Coach Albright used to say I could play for the team. You've got what it takes, Billy Joe. Look at the size of those hands, he'd say. Look. At how tall? I'd tell him just because I'm tall doesn't mean I can play basketball or even that I want to, but he'd say that I should play anyway. Coach Albright didn't say anything to me about basketball this year. I haven't gotten any shorter. It's because of my hands. My father used to say, why not put those hands to good use? He doesn't say anything about those hands anymore. Only Arlie Wanderdale talks about them and how they could play the piano again, if I would only try. This one's called Real Snow. The dust stopped and it snowed. Real snow. Dreamy Christmas snow. Gentle, nothing blowing, such calm like a fever. Wet, clinging to the earth, melting into the dirt, snow. Oh, the grass and the weed and the cattle and the birds, and my father will be happy. That was November of 1934. This one's called Dance Review. Vera Wannerdale is putting on a dance review at the palace, and Arlie said, if I'd play a number with the Black Mesa boys, it's hard coming, it's hard coming on to Christmas, just me and my father with no ma and no little brother. I don't really feel like doing anything, but still I told Arlie I would try just because it looked like it meant a lot to him. He said he'd be dancing then, so he needed a piano player and Mad Dog would be singing and he knew how I'd just love to be connected with anything Mad Dog's doing. The costumes Vera ordered come all the way from the city, she said. Special, the latest cuts, which I could go I wish I could go with her to pick them up. During rehearsals, Mad Dog comes off the stage after his numbers and stands by the piano. He doesn't look at me like I'm a poor motherless thing. He doesn't stare at my deformed hands. He looks at me like I am someone he knows, someone named Billy Joe Kelby. I'm grateful for that, especially, consider, especially considering how bad I'm playing. That's December of 1934, so is this one, Mad Dog's Tale. Mad Dog is surrounded by girls. They ask him how he got his name. He says, it's not because I'm wild or crazy. It's not because I'm a wild or crazy untamed boy, but because 14 years ago, when I was two, I would bite anything I could catch a hold of. My ma, my brother, Doc Rice, even Reverend Bingham. And so my father named me Mad Dog, and it stuck. When I go home, I ask my father if he knows Mad Dog's real name. He looks at me like I'm talking in another language. Ma could have told me. This one's called Art Exhibit. We had an art exhibit last week in the basement of the courthouse to benefit the library. Price of admission was one book or 10 cents. I paid 10 cents the first time, but they let me in the second and third times for free. That was awful kind since I didn't have another dime and I couldn't bring myself to hand over Ma's book of poetry from the shelf over the piano. 
It was really something to see the oil paintings, the watercolors, the pastels and charcoals. There were pictures of the panhandle, panhandle in the old days with the grass blowing and wolves. There was a painting of a woman getting dressed in a room of curtains and a drawing of a railroad station with a garden out front and a sketch of a little girl holding an enormous cat in her lap. But now the exhibit is gone and the paintings stored away in spare rooms or locked up where no one can see them. I feel such hunger to see such things and such an anger because I can't. That was December of 1934. And now we're on to winter of 1935. This one's called State Tests Again. Miss Freeland said our grade topped the entire state of Oklahoma on the state tests again, 24 points higher than the state average. I wish I could run home and tell Ma and see her nod and hear her say, I knew you could. It would be enough. January of 1935. This one's called Christmas Dinner Without a Cranberry Sauce. Mrs. Freeland was my Ma at the school Christmas, at the school Christmas dinner. I thought I'd be the only one without a real Ma, but two other motherless girls came. We served turkey, chestnut dressing, sweet potatoes, and brown gravy, made it all ourselves, and it came out pretty good, better than the Christmas dinner I made for my father at home, where we sat at the table, silent, just the two of us. Being there without Ma, without the baby, wouldn't have been so bad if I just remembered the cranberry sauce. My father loved Ma's special cranberry sauce, but she never showed, but she never showed me how to make it. That was January of 1935, and we will pick up there. Join next time.